I guess most of you was uh, here in the first part of this session and heard the Alexei Polikov presentation. S but just in case, I uh, need to mind that the industrial systems are not only are targeted by uh, some advanced threats, but actually it's infected with a uh, uh, low sophisticated malware. In, uh, in basic, the, the malware current is, just doesn't matter. Uh, whenever it's uh, APT or uh, not, it actually may lead to loss of availability uh, and the integrity of industrial control system, which is leads to some huge damage or a catastrophe. You may be wondering why um, not only the high sophisticated malware, uh, advanced malware, infects the such system like industrial control system, which is supposed to be very secure. Uh, the truth is that even if the security measures are in place, there's so much holes, there's so much vulnerabilities that allows attackers to bypass all that security. It just uh, like turning off the most of the security on the hosts or uh, change the configuration at the network devices. So they have uh, a lot of power because of all that vulnerabilities are in place. And uh, that's the reason for security assessment. It's like a first aid. Uh, the purpose is to identify as much weaknesses as we can at different layers uh, to find the way the attacker or a malware can uh, intrude the system, can escalate privileges, can propagate into the network, and uh, give advices to owners of those systems how to protect it. Uh, while I was assessing my first ICS system, I wondered why we have to assess the live system. Like, why can we assess the test bed? And then I learned that there's much difference between the test bed and the production system in terms of users' activities, some temp changes, configuration fixes, additional software that uh, you'll find only on the production system because it's alive. But this approach brings uh, some limitations as well because those systems are actually working to control some, I don't know, power plants, smart grids, uh, a drone collider. It's, uh, you know, like uh, pretty challenging to assess them and uh, keep them alive. So assessing the life system, you'll have uh, limited access, uh, limited abilities, and in some cases, the, your tools, assessing tools, has to be certified by a government or tested by an ICS system vendor. Uh, so it's pretty much challenges and limitations uh, for security assessment. And you need to done your job, done it uh, in, uh, I don't know, uh, bring the full value. So if just summarizing all of that stuff, we can get into a simple methodology well, uh, to assess industrial control system and not breaks it. We have to gather as much information from hosts, from network devices as we can, uh, sniff the network traffic, and then analyze it off-site. So took as much as you can and analyze it off-site. Uh, we'll try to use the as simplest tool as possible. Uh, most of the time, the system internal tools are available. Uh, in other cases, you'll use the system, Windows system tools like Netstat, ipconfig, and so on. Uh, in some cases, you'll need to develop your own tool or uh, took some third-party tool just for tasks that uh, can be accomplished with the uh, system tools, like uh, access to raw disk or uh, network sniffing via raw socket. Uh, the most uh, important thing uh, while assessing the live industrial system is to be sure that your tool not crash the system. It uh, uh, will perform its job and so you have to test and profile your tools. That, that, that's all the first part, and uh, let's go to real uh, system assessment. But before that, uh, I'd like to remind you that to uh, 
assess uh, weaknesses in the system security. Uh, it's valuable to mine like a hacker, like the people who, uh, the, the man who tried to intrude the system, penetrate it. Uh, basically, there's uh, three stages of uh, attack. It's uh, intrusion itself, uh, privilege escalation, and uh, propagation. So uh, we'll uh, talk uh, about each of those stages, about how to uh, find weaknesses uh, at different layers, but uh, in terms of those stages. So first of all, it's uh, intrusion. Uh, there's the initial attack vectors. Uh, there's the four major of them. Uh, and the two main of them is uh, from local network, when the employee used the infected laptops or USB sticks, uh, bringing updates to the systems, and uh, from, net, uh, from vendor's network, uh, where the vendor can manipulate or collect information about the devices, about the network events. It can be connected to different layers. So uh, actually, it's posing the uh, most greatest risk because uh, there's so much uh, possibilities to, uh, for, for attackers to attack different layers in the industrial systems. Uh, we we'll start with a network attack vector, uh, meaning the from uh, corporate network or the uh, vendor's uh, network. So to accomplish security assessment task, we need to analyze configuration of the network devices, such as routers, switches, firewalls. Uh, we need to grab an active configuration, but as well we have to collect information about the previous uh, activities, like a cache, uh, router tables, MAC tables, and so on. Uh, this information is uh, really valuable because even if active, uh, active configuration is secure, you may find some evidences that in the past there was some connection from external networks, there was some devices which are not a part of ICS system, like you can see some uh, unidentified MAC address, and so on. And uh, usually it's what you get. You'll, uh, may uh, you may find that uh, data replication from DMZ zone should be just a, in one direction, from DMZ to corporate network, like a data historian replication. But it's possible there's a bidirectional communication. This means that uh, someone from corporate network can uh, use the, those ports or uh, those channels to get into the DMZ zone from a corporate network. There's possible external networks from which the vendor access, so it can be allowed to connect from external networks. It could be uh, unknown MAC addresses, means that some unknown devices uh, was plugged in the past to uh, ICS network. So the next uh, possible attack vector is uh, from local network via USB stick. Uh, I, I, I guess you know uh, all of those cases, uh, heard of them, about how the updates for um, ICS software or just uh, particular software like uh, Windows are uh, installed on the internal uh, industrial network, on the servers, on the HMIs, on workstations. Uh, mostly it's uh, installed uh, with, a, with a USB stick, it brings it with USB sticks. So uh, actually uh, those USB are used in home, in any other uh, environment, uh, hostile environment. So it can be infected with uh, different kind of malware from porn blockers to uh, P2P trojans. Uh, to collect information f about what was this, um, I mean, what, what events <coughs> happened in the hosts, all you need is to get the Windows registry uh, and collect, uh, an analyze information about the systems configuration, about user activities. Um, sure, you can get uh, all the keys and values from the system registry by just using the REC interface, Windows REC interface, but you will lose the very valuable piece of information called the last write time. Uh, this is a timestamp when, whenever the key of registry was accessed or uh, written or changed. So 
If you collect the registry file via raw disk access, you'll get the solid file with uh, all information in it, and you can uh, build a timeline of events when the configuration was changed, when uh, some device was plugged in, uh, or any user activity like execution the file from USB stick and so on. Uh, when I was assessing my first industrial system, I, I was really wondering why we have to assess the live system, as I said earlier. But when I have, uh, w when I finished the analysis of my uh, of the Windows registry file, I was, you know, pretty shocked because there's so much security issues. There's uh, after run enabled. Uh, the user use uh, high privileged accounts to execute files from uh, USB sticks, from lo um, local files, some unknown files. Uh, so it's actually the, uh, I don't know. If you think in the attacker's mind, you can imagine like, okay, you have a, uh, one infected USB sticks and you get everything. You can just get hold the system, you get all privileges just from one USB stick. But that's, uh, not the purpose, because we are not pen testing the, the system. We are assessing them. So we have to find as much weaknesses as we can. So just let's go next to uh, privilege escalation uh, and try to assess the weaknesses, how the attacker or malware can escalate privileges on those hosts. There's actually uh, three possible ways. is to find uh, vulnerable application software on the systems, uh, is to find some vulnerabilities in the custom homemade software that used to uh, you know, tune up the host to make some additional redundancy, some communication and alerts between different uh, systems in ICS network. And it's just to uh, find or steal the password from some account so you can connect to another system. Um, there's uh, something in common between the third-party software and the homemade software is uh, poor implementation. You may be sure that uh, all that software is, uh, uh, is, is exploitable. I mean, there's uh, not budget software because it's uh, pretty hard to patch this software on the working system because it's you know, kind of working. You need to test the patches before, and before applying it. And uh, there's a homemade software that was written years ago. Nobody had the sources. Nobody know how it works, but it just working, keep working, so everybody happy. And uh, what makes the homemade software special is that it's thousand times more insecure than any other software you may find on the open market, because it lives in a hostile environment. It means that the attacker or malware can tamper it or infect those files. So next time they'll be executed, they'll be executed with uh, system privileges. Uh, not only the binaries, but actually config and date files are live in hostile environments, so you can uh, tamper some user input data, try to find the uh, buffer overflow vulnerabilities or uh, any other. And uh, the most funny part is that there's a lot of um, network configuration so actually, those applications uh, talk to each other. Like, there's a, like, if you found some vulnerable app in this host, in one, in one host, you may be pretty sure there's another host with the same app, and they are just chatting uh, via TCP or UDP. So actually, it's not only the privilege escalation security issue, but uh, it may lead to a network propagation. Uh, and at the end, you'll find that there's really numerous uh, software security vulnerabilities. Uh, there's uh, many insecure things with the homemade software, uh, and so on. Uh, to collect all this information, uh, it's uh, enough to use, uh, you know, like uh, list the files, uh, check their uh, version info section of the f each binary file. You know, it's is vulnerable. Uh, you can find a lot of information about the uh, installed software and its version from a registry. So it's not the hard part to identify those vulnerabilities or to uh, make uh, kind of vulnerability scan off-site. 
once you get all the information about the files on the host, about installed application from the registry, you can uh, use the offsite scan to identify which uh, software is vulnerable to which exploit, so you can link it and uh, make your report more valuable for uh, owner because you show the exact exploit or exact attack methods. Um, the last part is uh, actually my favorite one. It's about the network propagation. If you summarize all, those, uh, all that information about the attack vector, about the privilege escalation, uh, I guess uh, your report will be already filled with uh, uh, different uh, uh, descriptions of uh, attack vectors, like via USB stick, and uh, it's uh, actually ma ma many of those attack vectors lead to network propagation, but there's, uh, it's not the all, uh, the story, because the network propagation, like we all know, there's uh, network shares, there's uh, some weak password policy. So once you get the password from one system, you can use it on all other systems to just access it in a legitimate way. Uh, so there's actually some interesting things, like you can see the VLAN uh, in place, but it not enforce it. <laughs> it means that the different system on different VLANs may chat, may talk to each other via the network. So pocket, not drop it. You can just connect straight to other layer and uh, exploit, I don't know, any vulnerabilities, uh, it may be found there. So that's uh, most of the assessment part of my presentation. Uh, I mean, in terms of uh, how to assess, what to look for, uh, and so on. And at the end, uh, I have a, some, you know, feeling. I have a feeling that the whole system has a huge design flow. You know, like it's to totally insecure. It's pretty bad. But once you've done the, uh, the assessment of the life system, you will know that it's not the root. The root is insecure operational activities. The users just push the system in the way they want to use it. They bypass every security measures. They're doing everything just to make their life easier. Uh, and we all know that the security is, uh, is hard to grasp for people who just want to accomplish their task. It's uh, expensive. So it's much cheaper to do as they do it uh, 10 years ago. Uh, as a conclusion, I'd like to have a small talk about the tools, about how to assess the life system. Uh, because you have no way to use, I don't know, vulnerability scan on those systems. You can use network vulnerability scanner. Uh, it's, uh, you know, quite dangerous. And uh, the people who own those systems will just don't give you such a privileges to use those systems. So you have uh, just two choices. Uh, first of all, you can use the Windows instrumentation management system uh, to gather information about network connections, process lists, about shares, about accounts, uh, a lot of stuff. Or you can use the native way, like using the C++ or, uh, I don't know, Python or Perl to accomplish some low-level task. And there's a pros and cons about each of the methods. Like with VMI, you have uh, remote access. So you can uh, grab information from different systems remotely. Uh, but cons is that uh, it's not very flexible and it uh, uh, requires a little bit more resources in terms of uh, memory and uh, CPU. Uh, so I just uh, want to show you that in most cases, uh, all of those uh, uh, host apps, host apps means that there's some uh, environment that uh, execute your code. So for native, it's just uh, uh, common runtime. And uh, for others, like Python, Perl, C script, uh, it's uh, some kind of interpreter. But uh, all of those in the red area are actually uh, called to uh, VMI server. 
uh, application, host application. So you need to uh, take in mind that uh, this host up the VMI service actually took some CPU, took some memory to accomplish the task. Uh, but if we compare different uh, approach to uh, memory dump or raw file access, like grabbing the registry file uh, from a raw disk, it's uh, kind of easy, but uh, took a little bit memory. We can see that the Python Perl or uh, native C, it's uh, pretty equivalent, pretty same in terms of uh, memory and CPU. So uh, I know there's a lot of uh, holy wars about what's the best, Python or Perl. Or, uh, but actually, it uh, doesn't matter. They are pretty same. Uh, if we talk about the information you can collect with a VMI or uh, with native access, so uh, just for example, the system internals tools use the native way to collect information from a system. And uh, all Windows uh, tools like Netstat, task list, they are used the VMI. Uh, you can see the performance for uh, all that uh, information gathering activities are pretty same. So there's only one advice, just <laughs> don't use a PowerShell because PowerShell had to be installed on the host uh, and uh, you know, it, it's a kind of change uh, uh, in configuration of the host which shouldn't be done. And uh, it's grab much more resources as you can uh, see in the previous slide. So you have to be very careful with the PowerShell. Everything else is just fine. Uh, thank you, thank you very much. It was a, a pretty simple presentation. I hope you get enjoyed.